Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a chess miniature to share with you from the 1982 Olympiad. A 21 mover between Garry Kasparov on the white end and John Nunn. The opening is a Benoni defense. And so inherent with the Benoni are some quick imbalances with the structure. Each side now has a majority of pawns. Black with the 3 to 2 on the queen side. White with the 2 to 1 in the center. Each side respects these majorities, takes at least one step in an offensive or defensive way in this game to address their advance. We continue with g6, and now move 7, f4. This signals the pawn storm variation. White is now looking to push with e5. He's looking to set into motion his majority. Bishop g7. And in the game, it's bishop b5 check. If white plays e5 here, it is too soon. Overextended pawn, really, with there now being three attackers and only one defender. It would be very difficult for white to maintain e5, if not impossible to maintain e5. So, more development on this move 8, and it's bishop b5 check. Now, with this pawn storm variation, when bishop b5 check lands, it pretty much forces an only reply. Black must underdevelop the knight. Black must take into account the e5 push. This underdeveloping move has opened up the bishop's eyes to this advance. e5 would also no longer be hitting with tempo. Why is it important for black to underdevelop with knight f to d7 in the pawn storm variation? Let's have a look at the other ways to block with the queenside minors. I want to at least give you a feel for each of these moves. e5 hits in both cases. So let's put some moves on, and I'm going to ask a question to black. How do you feel in this position? How do you feel having to work around two white pawns, this pawn duo, central duo, in your house? These knights, I can tell you, are not thrilled. The white knights are. They're on their favorite square. Just look at the knight quality here in the central pawns. One other quick note. There's a reason why I'm taking with the queen in this position. She watches over g4. If you take with the knight, g4 could hit, and this guy is cooked. Okay. One other one. If you're blocking with this, yet again e5. And the e-pawn is not done. e6. White's taking advantage of this pin, but be aware... That's not the end of the story here. It can get messy. After queen h4 check, we got some wild continuation like this, where eventually white is going to have the two minor pieces versus the rook. Okay. We have some idea now what's maybe happening if these guys block in the game. Best move, knight f d7. And let me throw this position to you as a pop quiz. What would you play here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, in the game it is a4, a move that takes into account the majority. This is a defensive move. It's not allowing black to expand on the queen side so easily. If, instead of a4, we have this supernatural looking knight f3, in comes a6. Now what do you do? You want to give up bishop for knight, help black develop, or are you going to retreat? In comes b5, and now all of a sudden as white, you have to ask yourself questions. Where's this guy going if b4? Where's this guy going if c4? Save yourself the headache. a4 puts an end to all of that. There will be no b-pawn getting to b5. This guy is stable. This guy could be kicked eventually, but this is the main thing. The knight on c3 will be stable. Okay, there's a drawback with a4. b4 is now a hole, so black takes what he's been given. He's not playing a6 here. If a6, the bishop can fall back, and then this is a bit too cluttered. The space advantage here, and the space by white, is, I believe, seen as an advantage in this situation. So, no a6. 
in this position for black. Instead, knight a6. He's getting to the b4 square. And black is definitely not worried about this situation here because this opened b file for black is very appealing. Also, the b4 square for a rook is very nice as well. So, this knight's going to get here. Now, the knight goes to f3 on this move 10. Only after first addressing this idea for black, uh, this idea by black to expand on the queen side. Knight b4. It's not the only way black can go. I'd like to point this out here. If, uh, instead of knight b4, black can castle first. And then, you know, this is also a possibility. The knight could go to b4 or c7. Totally different ideas. In mind, if you're going to c7, you're looking to continually prep and get that b5 advance in there but in this game he simply hops right into b4 castles a6 and in the game we have bishop takes knight very direct he wants the move back he's not retreating and he's meeting the recapture with this follow-up f5 very aggressive play this guy is still in the center he has with f5 opened up the diagonal for the bishop. In the game, it's castles. What's happening if pawn takes pawn? How can play develop? Bishop g5. If the bishop blocks, the bishop can go to h6. Very irritating post for black to deal with. If the queen moves, we have this capture, and now all of a sudden there's this possibility or that possibility. And finally, if f6 in this position, the bishop can fall back. Now, what would black's options be here? Well, if you capture on e4, check out this star move, knight g5. This forces castles here for black. Still an even game after knight g takes on e4. Castles, knight g takes e4. And if black wants to... For some reason lose you can always take the knight and we're going to have a mate in two one other note here in this position after f6 bishop h4 if black castles there's this really neat move e5 and this is creating a passed d punts taking advantage of the pinned f6 pawn it's still a ball game ahead but if i had to pick a side i'm going with white this pawn is very dangerous, and I like having the safer king. In any case, that's how play can develop if black is capturing on f5 on this move 13, but instead he castles, bishop g5 hits, and the reply here is f6, considered the best move. What other options are there? Well, if the bishop blocks, not really a good idea to welcome the exchange of the only defender really of the king side white could continue with queen d2 and play a position where the queen stay on board seeing how white has the safer king pawn duo is still around we got these gaps over here on black's end so this isn't so attractive and this also wouldn't be attractive because it would allow f6 and white could continue with queen d2 and look out because we're looking at these moves next as white. Queen h6, knight g5, with the idea for mate on h7. So, black plays in the best way. He shuts down this diagonal, says go somewhere else. White goes to f4, he's pinpointing the base point. In comes g takes f. And now, bishop takes d6. Black's reply here. We have this rook under fire. It's a losing move. Black blunders in this position. He ends up capturing on a4. What is considered best? Very messy continuation. This is considered best. Rook e8. Bishop takes c5. We have these captures going on here. This check can be met with queen d4 with the knight still around. But after the knight is captured, this is serious. No time to recapture here. Queen b6 would be winning the piece. So white has to defend b6 in this position with one of these two moves. 
And it says this is even. Now, don't ask me how to assess this one. This is way too messy. Okay, a lot of a lot of messy positions <laughs> with the Benoni. All right. In the game, instead of this, we have bishop takes a4, rook takes a4. We're essentially trading what? Black's light square bishop has been captured and white's dark square bishop. So what does this mean? No light square bishop around. You're not watching over this sensitive f5 square. White is not taking an f5 here. There's only one winning continuation. White finds it. Move 18. Watch how quick this game ends. Watch how effective a white knight is when it's on f5. He circles right in there. This is a piece that has been itching to move. He didn't have... Uh, so many great options in the forward here. So he's going to h4. He's getting out of the way of the queen. He's getting out of the way of the rook. Two pieces have been helped because of this move. And he will not be denied that f5 square. All right, from here, f takes e. Knight f5. Where do you go? You have to be very careful now as black where you put that queen. In the game, it's queen d7. If she goes forward, pressure on the knight. Defending a pawn, there would be queen d, queen to g4. And what is black doing about this? If you withdraw the queen to defend, that's going to be painful. The queen going here or here can both be met with knight h6, and you're going to lose the queen one way or the other. And if you try to defend with the rook, yet again, knight h6 lands. And there goes the rook. So it is queen d7. From here, knight takes pawn. And there's this idea to take the pawn. What do you do about that? In the game, king h8 is played. Why is king h8 played? Um, Black wants to at least be threatening to take on d5. He can't do it now. If you take with the queen here, knight e7 hits. There goes the queen. And if you take with the knight, there's multiple ways to continue from here, but this is the clearest way to see uh, this one out. Queen takes knight straight away with check, and then you land the fork, and you're up the piece in the end. Okay. King h8 was played. One other note, if black tries b6 here, simply defending c5, white can withdraw the rook just a step, and right around the corner, rook g3. Okay, a winning attack. In the game, though, it is king h8. And after knight takes c5, black resigns. What are you supposed to do here? The queen is attacked. And now with their no longer a pawn on c5, this knight is not defended. So queen is hit. The knight is hit. How are you supposed to defend both? We'll have a look at a couple moves. If queen b5 in this position, there is knight e6 with the fork, and white is soon going to win the exchange. After the rook moves, we capture on g7. And if the queen takes on d5, we're still going to get into that e6 square. You just have to first exchange queens. And then there you go. How might this play out? Just to make it super clear in this endgame, the knight is no match for the major piece. So, this one goes no further. Black knows uh, white's going to be winning some material here and simply threw in the towel. Just have a look at this final position before I sign off here. These knights, look at the ground they cover. That's a lot of squares. And during this 21 move game, guess who didn't have to even take a step the queen she got to watch this whole game from home base didn't have to take a single step but she was definitely still influential in this game her presence was still felt these ideas in some cases to come out to g4 connecting with this monster knight on f5 excellent game by kasparov completely dominant final position Anyhow, as usual, 
feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.